Welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is receiving. Life's bounty is so vast and available at every moment if only we can make ourselves available to it by opening ourselves to receiving those gifts. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And it should be a fun conversation. Before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light <clears throat> lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy out from your heart into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together. Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Rosalyn. Good morning, Robin. So good to have you both here this morning and welcome to everybody else who's joining us. So uh, we are talking about receiving. Originally, I was going to call today's session presencing, uh, but I opted, that's my chair in the background. I, um, I opted to call it receiving because we get to open ourselves to receiving the bounty of life. And so often what is the case is that we're so enmeshed in the distractions of life's demands that we aren't really present at all. We're not engaged, we're just doing very mechanically, automatically. And what we want to do is cultivate our ability to actually experience life, even the mundane things like washing dishes, to not just be doing something to get through it or to get it done, but to be doing it with your being or to be being as you're doing it, like to be being present. And when we are present, we, we are experiencing life instead of allowing life to just go by. So what we want to do is to cultivate that receiving. And if we can, we can think about our physicalness as a very, very complex, multidimensional receiver, receiving impulses, sensations, or, or receiving impulses that manifest as sensations that we then experience and that's how we interact with the world is actually by receiving this, these sensations. So when we can wake ourselves up to those sensations, we're, we're more actively engaged and participating in life. I, I, can, I can tell you that, and I, I don't think I'm unique in this, but for many years, 
I was really just trying to get through it, you know, get to the other side of it. And what that does when we, when we're in that kind of mindset, we're not living life. We're not present to life. We're, we're maybe enduring it, but, but not connected to it. And there's such a richness, even if we can just connect to our sensations, so much of, of the uh, spiritual path um, that I was kind of indoctrinated to was trying to conquer the body or transcend the body or forget the body. But the thing is, even if we are spirit manifest in physical form, if we are consciousness manifest in physical form, the thing is we're manifest in physical form. So there's an incredible richness about that. The fact is that all of our sensations, all of our, our experiences, hearing, seeing, all our senses are a function are intimately integrated and interwoven with our physicalness. And so, especially as women uh, in this culture, we are taught to be very critical of our appearance, of our bodies, let alone ourselves. I mean, all of us are taught to be self-critical. But for women especially, we, we also deeply objectify our bodies. You know, the culture is one where women's bodies are objectified, but it's not just men that are doing that objectification. We do it as well. We treat our body as something separate from ourselves that we, that we judge uh, rather than appreciate and connect with. And part of our path to wholeness, I believe, is metabolizing those, uh, the physicalness that we are. And I think we can gain a deeper appreciation for our body aspect. I'm going to say that instead of our bodies. I think I that might be something for me to start practicing because I'll say my body and what's that doing? It's separating me from my body. And yes, I'm not my body, but or I'm not, I'm not, oh boy. It's, we don't even have the language for this. I'm noticing, you know, to be an embodied being. So to be an embodied being the expression of that being is coming through this body, this physicalness and all the sensations and, and the intelligence of the body to be able to heal itself, to be able to, to um, grow, to breathe, to circulate blood, to digest and metabolize nutrition, to have all these sensations, to be able to have the mechanism to translate experience, to create language, to speak, to make sound, to all of these things that we, we take for granted when we separate ourselves from our physicalness. So I don't even know how to begin to talk about it. Uh, the the physical aspect of being without without separating self from it and if we're separating self from the body then who are we who are we because so many of the judgments that we have about ourselves the the opinions, the beliefs, the limits that we place on ourselves, they're also 
deeply entwined and meshed, intermingled with our physical manifestation, right? Like our history, we can't we can't separate ourselves from the history that is embodied. I'm just playing with this for, you know, on this level, I guess is this is a little an, a new level of inquiry around it. But, you know, we'll look at our bodies as something foreign. I know I have. It's like, what's going on? Like when I lost my hair, it, it was just like, I'm, I'm trapped in this thing and stuff is going on and I'm identified with it and at, I'm identified with it. And at the same time, I don't seem to have control over it. And, and I'm at the, at the effect of it. And uh, I, a friend has cancer and has been going through chemo and all kinds of treatments and having all kinds of other side things happening physiologically. And it, it, I can, I have had the experience myself where I felt like my body turned on me. It had its own life and it turned on me. And, uh, you know, when we have extra weight or not enough weight, or we have uh, food sensitivities, which I have a number of, or we have toxicity or whatever going on in our bodies how do we how can we create a new relationship of receiving that allows us to become more whole so even just to notice that through our bodies, we are constantly receiving, we're receiving information, we're, we're funneling out and filtering out information through the physical vehicle. And, and I'm imagining that the way that like, if we can even imagine that maybe thoughts are things, right, that there's there's this field and it's got frequencies going on and we're receivers for these different frequencies and for these different experiences. If we can better attune to what we're receiving, then we can have a much richer experience of life. And I'm imagining that as we attune more to our bodies and like have appreciation, even just the simplest thing, like I invite you to just take a moment and rub your fingers together and just be willing to receive that sensation, like to be present to it. So, receiving and presence is maybe are are maybe very deeply related because we're connecting to our environment and so often the way that we live is barring ourselves off defending ourselves from protecting ourselves against and not actually being in a place of receptivity um, because receptivity is an engagement it's it's an openness it requires an openness a um an expansiveness to be able to receive to receive the information for instance the, the for me one of the things that brings me most readily into uh, presence and also into an experience of love and expansiveness is beauty. And there needs to be an openness 
to receive, perceive beauty. Bernadette, oh my gosh. Good morning, good morning. It's been forever. Welcome back. It's so good to have you here with us. So we're talking about receiving and the willingness to receive. Uh, there's, it, It's so interesting to me how we may be willing to give and give and give and give. And yet, when it comes to receiving, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on and we don't really, we're not an invitation. We're not an invitation for uh, receiving the gifts that are offered us. And I don't mean just gifts that are offered by other people, but even the gifts, the gifts that the universe offers us all the time, but, but we're not in receiving mode. So we don't even perceive those gifts. So Bernadette says been stuck in the body that has a mind of its own and different from my own thoughts. Yeah. So I think Bernadette, I think that that is a common experience, a common plight is that we feel like we, whoever we are, we're trapped in this physical thing instead of recognizing that this physical thing is a vehicle of our expression. At least also, if not entirely. And I, I believe, I believe this and I don't know how to penetrate it fully to its deepest expression yet, but I, I believe that as we experience life, as we process energy, that when we don't process energy, for instance, when there is emotion that's stuck through trauma or, or repression, suppression, when there's emotion that's stuck, if it's stuck for long enough, it compresses and compresses and compresses and ultimately manifests itself physically. And it may not be something that we have conscious access to, uh, how that compression has happened. But to be able to release that energy, to be able to allow it to decompress and dissolve and diffuse, that has the effect in many cases of shifting our physical experience. I also, I, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Bashar. I think it was Bashar that I heard this from, uh, it was, but uh, Bashar is a channeled entity um, that is really, really interesting. And so much of what we talk about here is echoed by, by the things that Bashar says. So um, they were talking about instant, instantaneous healing. And this isn't necessarily in the line of receiving Maybe it is, but uh, I thought it was really interesting. And what what he was talking about was there are multitudes of timelines. That's what physics says anyway, right? That there are infinite timelines. And so we are expressed or we have the ability or we do express ourselves in multiple dimensions, multiple timelines. And so Robin says, I'm enjoying him. Me too. Me too. So what he says is to be, to, for a spontaneous healing to occur, you transition yourself into one of these timelines where you are fully in the experience of a version of yourself that never had whatever that ailment is. And stepping fully into that timeline then disappears 
the ailment, the complaint, the condition, because it never existed in that timeline. And I, I truly do believe that we are multidimensional beings. I think we're switching timelines around all the time. It's just that the subtlety of it, the nuance is generally indetectable. So this was an, uh, uh, years ago, I came up with this notion of how to reconcile the idea of fate and predestination. And what I came up with is that there are these multitude of timelines. At any given moment, we have a choice point. And when we make a choice, that well, each timeline, by the way, in this concept, each timeline is fixed. It has its own trajectory. And then we make a choice and we're catapulted into a different timeline with a different trajectory. And then we make another choice and then we make another choice. And so it's it's kind of like this wonderful maze of potentiality where we're, we're moving into different faded paths but we can move from one to another and so if there is a multitude and an infinite number of timelines in which we can place ourselves then we can place ourselves into a timeline where this condition this um disease disease or complaint just never existed we can place ourselves in timelines where our potentials are magnified exponentially it's it's really an interesting concept and i've seen See, the, the thing is that switching from one of these timelines to another, usually, as I said earlier, is so subtle because the the shift is subtle. The shift seems small. But it's actually put you in a whole different trajectory. So if you think about a rocket ship, if it's off by a degree, that that can turn into something quite dramatic over time and distance and the most subtle shifts can put us on a whole new path for discovery and mostly we don't detect these things but every now and then there's a shift that's so radical that that things are very 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 different and you may have heard of the Mandela effect. And the Mandela effect is how different people have different memories of life and what has happened in life. And um, there are groups of people who have the same common memory but if we look at history or documentation the the memory that this group has is at odds with the way things are reported so an example is um for oh what was it called something sweepstakes and Ed McMahon was the MC for it. Uh, it was Publishers Clearinghouse. That's what it was, I think. And it was Ed McMahon. And that's what I remember. But apparently, Ed, uh, uh, now if we look at history, Ed McMahon had nothing to do with uh, Publishers Clearinghouse. Or Jiffy Peanut Butter. And I remember Jiffy Peanut Butter, but apparently it's Jiff, or now it is. You know, so anyway, I invite you to check that out. Um, I, I don't quite know how we got here from receiving, but um, 
I, I invite you to find communion somehow with your body and, and to be able to embrace it as an expression, as a vehicle for your expression, as a teacher, um, not something that we're condemned to, even though it can be exceedingly painful and challenging and and require all kinds of attention that um, is hard to manage a lot of times. And uh, even though, well, it presents its challenges in very, very, very big ways. And some of us experience that more than others. So Rosslyn says, listening to the body as healer. Yes, there's so much opportunity there, even though it's a it can be a very, very, very rough road. So the thing is, the less we resist it, the more we can learn from it and grow with it. So that's it for today. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel and my Facebook page as well. And there's a uh, Core Connection YouTube channel as well that has all these recordings. And I wish everyone a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Roslyn, for weekend wishes. And as always, I'm so grateful, really, truly, deeply grateful to have the opportunity to connect with you and um, explore consciousness together. So until next time.